Oh my god, it's attacking the city! What is it, boss? It's a big fucking monster! What kind of monster, boss? A fucking gorilla! Hello, I'm Christian, this is Jeremy, and we are continuing our reviews on the King Kong series with King Kong Escapes which is the second of the Toho King Kong films, and the movie is actually an adaptation of a cartoon called The King Kong Show, which was a Rankin-Bass production, which I think was an American and Japanese co-production. I've never seen that show, so I don't know how true this movie is to the show. Now, the movie does not appear to be in continuity with King Kong vs. Godzilla. Uh... Nor does it really appear to be in continuity with the show, I'm guessing, because when King Kong shows up in this movie, it's supposed to be the first time Kong has ever shown up in this universe or something. What do you think of King Kong Escapes? It's pretty bad. Uh, I don't really care for this entry. Um, it's just... Well, first of all, you know... Let's take the original, for example. That had groundbreaking stop-motion effects. And this one has Harao Nakajima wearing the most unconvincing King Kong suit, uh, in my opinion, in any of the movies. And, I mean, the face just looks so goofy. Oh, yeah, he looks high throughout a lot of this movie. <laughs> yes, yes, he does. He actually... I always thought he looked high in King Kong vs. Godzilla 2, but... I've always liked the suit in King Kong vs. Godzilla, even though that's not very convincing either. There's something about that suit I've always liked, but yeah, as far as the suits go, this is easily the worst King Kong oh, yeah. suit. Uh, now, the film is directed by Ashiro Honda, who also directed King Kong vs. Godzilla, and he directed many of the earlier Godzilla films, including the original Godzilla. Now, at this point, Ishiro Honda was getting very burnt out on giant monster films because they're not really the films he wanted to make. Like, originally they were, because obviously the original Godzilla was all a big metaphor for the bomb, and he wanted these films to be very serious and geared towards adults, but at this point, the Godzilla films and the kaiju films in general were getting geared more towards children. But I think at this... I think at this point, Toho was basically like, we own, we own your soul, you're gonna do as we say, and that's, he was just do he was a director for hire at this point, so you can tell this is not really a movie he wanted to make. But I will say, I don't hate the movie, but it's definitely not one of my favorite films of the King Kong series, or one of my favorite giant monster films at all. This is a, it's a bad movie, yeah. I'm gonna say it, it's but it's... Bad. I'm used to this kind of cheesy giant monster film because the later Godzilla films of like the late 60s, early 70s got really goofy, but I grew up on a lot of those, so I'm used to a giant monster film that's that's this goofy, but you know what? When I was re-watching this movie, I was just thinking, I could be watching one of the Godzilla movies right now. That's basically my stance on this, is like... I would much rather watch a Godzilla film or something than something like this. Yeah, that's kind of my opinion, too. I mean, while watching this, I was like, wow, oh, I could be watching something so much better right now. Yeah. And, uh, like, I will say, it is a movie intended for kids. And I remember showing my little sister this movie, and I think she liked it, but... So I guess if you have kids and you want to get your kids into giant monster films, maybe this would be a good start, but I would say, you know what, show them one of the Godzilla movies, and then show them maybe the original King Kong before you show them something like this. Yeah, because this really is pretty bad. I mean, in the scene where Kong is fighting that dinosaur, and the dinosaur... Like, that dinosaur has a name. It's Gurasaurus. Right. Show respect. <laughs> okay. But when Kong is fighting Gurasaurus, and Gurasaurus, you know, kicks him and he falls over, you can see that the suit is definitely, you know, as fake as it looks. Uh, you know, I mean, you can sort of see it expose something which just shows how ridiculous it is. There's a villain in the movie. Do you want to say what the villain's name is? Why, sure, Christian. The villain of this movie is none other than Doctor Who. Yes! Doctor Who is the main villain of this movie. 
okay, it's not actually Doctor Who, but they called the character Doctor Who, so it's fun to make jokes about that. Yeah. Now, maybe we shouldn't make fun of the movie too much for that, because Doctor Who was actually the name of a villain from the King Kong cartoon that this movie is based on. Now, I know the King Kong show came about around the same time as the first incarnation of the actual Doctor Who. Now, I don't know what the deal is with that. Like, I don't know if Rankin Bass were simply unaware of Doctor Who, because it was a relatively new show back when the King Kong show came about, and maybe it's just a coincidence, or maybe they called the character Doctor Who on the King Kong show as a tribute to the actual Doctor Who. I don't really know the backstory behind all that. I'm not really a big Doctor Who fan, but if somebody ever asks me who's your favorite Doctor, I'll just name off the actor who plays him in this movie. <laughs> That's my favorite Doctor. One way I will defend this movie a little bit is it's basically a live-action Saturday morning cartoon. I mean, obviously, it's based on a Saturday morning cartoon, but, like, that's kind of how you could defend it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, it's good, cheesy, hokey fun, I suppose. Except it's not good. Oh, no, no, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Now, the plot of King Kong Escapes is it follows a group of scientists who work for the UN. They end up on this island, and there they find a giant gorilla called King Kong, as well as some prehistoric creatures. Kong immediately takes a liking to the female scientist, Susan. They report their findings to the UN. Meanwhile, an evil scientist named Doctor Who is working for the government of an unnamed country who want to build a nuclear bomb, so who is mining a radioactive element called Element X? He has built a robot version of King Kong to harvest the element, but when that fails, he kidnaps the real Kong. Eventually, who acquires the help of the main characters, and he forces them to work with him. Eventually, King Kong escapes from Doctor Who and swims to Japan, and the movie leads to a fight between Kong and the robot Kong, who is called Mikani Kong. Now, in the film, Rhodes Reason plays Commander Carl Nelson, who is arguably the main human hero of the film. Linda Miller, not to be confused with another actress of the same name, who is in Alice Sweet Alice. That's a completely different person, but this Linda Miller plays the character of Susan Watson, who is sort of the stand-in for Anne Darrow in the film. Akira Takarada plays one of the main characters in the film. Now, Akira Tekarada was in several of the Godzilla films, including the original 1954 film where he played the character of Ogata. Now, I'm probably going to butcher this actor's name, but I think it's Hideo Amamono, and I know some people who actually know how to pronounce his name probably just committed suicide right now, but he plays the main villain, Doctor Who. Now, Mayhama, or Maihama, I'm not really sure how to say her name, but she plays the character of Madame Piranha, who starts out the film as sort of a secondary antagonist, but she does have a redemption in the film, and personally, I found her to be a much better female lead than Susan Watson, but that's just my opinion. Now, Hama also played the character of Fumiko in King Kong vs. Godzilla, but she's perhaps best known for being a Bond girl. She was actually in the James Bond film, You Only Live Twice. Haro Nakajima, who played Godzilla in most of the earlier Godzilla films, is the suit actor for King Kong in this movie. Now, I can't pronounce this suit actor's name, but the same suit actor plays both Mikani Kong and the dinosaur that King Kong fights in the film. Now, the dinosaur is called Gurosaurus, who would go on to be a character in the Godzilla series. He would later appear in the Godzilla film Destroy All Monsters, and he would appear in stock footage in the Godzilla films Godzilla's Revenge and Godzilla vs. Gigon. So, what do you think of the acting and the characters in King Kong Escapes? Uh, they're not very good. Um... Especially the lead female. Susan Watson is her name. Right. Show some respect. Susan Watson. Her voice is so incredibly annoying. It's so high-pitched and 
whiny. <laughs> well, now, to be fair, Linda Miller, who plays her, that's not her voice. She was dubbed in this movie. We both watched the dubbed version, so yeah. that wasn't her voice. Uh, so, I really can't say she gives a bad performance. It's more so... Whoever dubbed her voice made yeah. her voice really freaking annoying. Yeah. Okay, so whoever the actress who the dubbed voice belongs to, her voice is annoying. Yeah. And uh, I also found the villain, Doctor Who, to be extremely over the top. Oh, yeah. No, he's like such a two-dimensional... Actually, I might be giving him too much credit. One-dimensional. He's a very one-dimensional villain. Like, Just... he he's a Saturday morning cartoon villain. Oh, yeah. He has no depth to him. At yeah. All. And once again, you could defend that because this is based on that cartoon, and you could say, okay, it's just a live-action Saturday morning cartoon, but yeah, he's... Yeah, I don't think the acting in this movie is particularly good. I, I did like the actress who played the uh, secondary antagonist, who, as I said, does get a redemption in the film. Yeah. I, I thought she was honestly a better female lead than uh, Linda Miller was in this movie. But what do you think of Akira Tekarada in the film? Yeah, I mean, he does a decent job. Um, I mean, he's, I believe, dubbed too, so... Yeah. But, I mean, he does what he can. I guess, you know, the fight between King Kong and Mechani Kong is good, cheesy fun, if you want to look at it as that. But once again, I would rather watch something like Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla than something like this. Yeah, I mean, I agree that it is good, cheesy fun, although it takes forever to get to that good, cheesy fun. Yeah, that, the film also feels longer than it actually yeah, is. Instead, we get some uh, really over-the-top, one-dimensional villain whining about finding, whine about trying to mine for Element X the whole time. Yeah, I, I do want to point out that there is a little bit of social commentary in this film. It's only in one scene, but you could tell it was Honda trying to get his thoughts on, like, nuclear testing out there. Doctor Who, in the movie, he works for Madame Piranha, and who represents some unnamed country who wants to build a nuclear weapon, and that's what they're mining Element X for. He says to her, when she's all worried about if King Kong's gonna kill people, he's like, well, a nuclear bomb would be far more destructive than that monster. It's like, okay, you can tell that's Honda trying to get his viewpoints in there, but for this kind of movie, it didn't really work too well because the whole movie's so freaking goofy. Yeah, it definitely feels very out of place. I mean, it's just, the movie is so goofy that, you know, that one little bit of seriousness in there just doesn't mean anything, to be <laughs> honest, Yeah, when you're surrounded by all this goofiness. I did love when, uh, because he tries to take control of Kong at one point, and get Kong to mine the element, and then the mind control stops, and I, just, I did love him. He's like, you big dummy! <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was hilarious, too. <laughs> Starts flipping his shit. I will say also is you could kind of see sort of a James Bond influence on this movie. I, this was a period where a lot of these kaiju films were kind of trying to appeal to fans of the James Bond movies. So, that was our review of King Kong Escapes, and our next movie review will be on the 1976 remake of King Kong.